Hi, this is Michael from Expanse VR, and in this episode, we're gonna be looking at distance grabbing. Now, when we're actually playing any VR game, of course, interacting with objects is super important. And so far, we've shown you how to grab objects when you're up close, but quite often in VR, we're limited in certain ways. And for instance, if you are having a player that is continuously having to bend down to pick something up, as much as VR is supposed to be very realistic, most players are gonna get tired and bored if they're having to continuously bend over to pick objects up. So distance grabbing provides a much better way of interacting with the VR environment. Uh, it's much more user friendly and will allow your players to enjoy things a lot more. It also provides for some other options later on down the track, but for the moment, we're gonna go diving straight into it. Now, compared to the grabbing mechanisms that we've already done, distance grabbing is a little bit more tricky, not quite so straightforward, and there is a bit of a learning curve to it, at least with the OVR integration. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, click that notification button down below to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new tutorial for you. Now, I'm going to bring up the documentation. And with everything I do, I'm very much for self-learning. And a part of programming, and I've probably said this many times before, is problem solving. If you can't problem solve something yourself, if you can't learn to read documentation, you are going to struggle down the road. And so with this one here, what we're going to do with this uh, episode is I'm just going to show you the documentation here and I will be the first to admit that the Oculus documentation isn't the best, but everything is there for us. So the challenge for this uh, video is we're just going to quickly go through the documentation and what I would like you to do is pause after we've gone through it and have a try with what we've done in the last two episodes and what is here in the documentation, you should be able to get, if not all the way, you should be able to get 90% of the way through this. And then once you've had a crack at it, and don't be afraid to fail, don't be afraid to muck it up, we, you can always start it again. But if you don't have a try at it, and if you don't experiment, you are never going to learn. So have a read along with me now, pause the video, have a try at it, and then unpause and have a look at how I actually accomplish what we need to do. Now, going through the documentation, there are a few things that we need to have to make this work. Now, the first one is our player controller, which we already have implemented from the previous version. The next thing we need to have is something to detect when we are in range of any of the objects. So here they've called it the detect grab range game object. But in all honesty, you can call it whatever you like. Um, I think I usually have it like as grab manager or something like that. And they have it in here, um, The what they actually make the components of. The next part of that, of what we need, is the... The next part we need is the left and right hands, uh, the distant grab hands. So these are a little bit different to the hand prefabs that we've used before. These ones have some other parts in it. But we'll go through these again and they are implemented in a slightly different way and lastly of course we'll need a grabbable game object or two and these are set up very similar to the way that we did the other game objects that we wanted to grab just that they will have in the fact that they'll have the collider rigid body but they'll also have this last component here and that is it now, the easiest way to go through all this is just to check the documentation, what we have here, and I will provide the link for this documentation below. And the other part will be that you'll probably need to jump in to the distance grabber scene. Remembering that it's in the Oculus folder, sample framework, usage. And the one that you're gonna to wanna to have a look at is the distance grab scene here. And that will answer a lot of the questions there, how few things are set up. Again, try to do it without doing any Googling. At the very least, if you do Google, maybe look at something that's in a forum or two, but try not to look at a YouTube tutorial. I know that's pretty ironic, this being a YouTube tutorial, but 
part of what I'm trying to do here is not just show you how to use these things, but also to show you how to be a better programmer. And there's going to be a lot of times, especially it gets more and more advanced, there are not going to be YouTube videos for what you're trying to do. So give it a try, pause now, and then come back. Okay, now that you've given it a try, um, let's have a go at ourselves. Now for me, I'm going to use an axe, which we're going to use off the asset store. So if we dive in, so we're going to use the axe slicer uh, asset, which is a free asset. So just have a look for it up in there. I'll provide a link again down below for you. We're going to bring it all in. It's a nice, simple model, and this is going to be, uh, provide a good exercise for us and also show you a couple little tricks that you may need to come up with when using grabber options. So bringing it into our scene, it's just here in the axe slicer. Let's just close that down for a start. Prefab, axe slicer. Now, as you're going to see, um, if you're using the universal render pipeline like I have been for this series, it's going to come in purple. All we need to do is upgrade our assets. Also, as you can see, it's quite huge. <laughs> so for me, I changed it to three, three and three. Now I'm going to provide it somewhere for us to be able to pick it up. So I'm just going to put it here on this barrel. So we've got somewhere for it to grab. So as we come into the scene, we'll see the there and we can grab it. And as you can see, we've still got our good trusty rock from last week. So what we're going to do here to make our life a little bit easier is we're actually going to create a empty. And this is going to be our axe handler. As we can see, it's quite there, right? We need our remembering from the documentation. It said that we need a rigid body. We also need a collider. What I need nearly forgot to do is we get our axe here. Copy component. Paste it to get it there, but you can see it's going to come out huge. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right. Now, the reason why we're doing the axe handler as a separate component and not putting everything on our axe, I want it to be grabbed at a certain point. So what we need to do is then bring it down even smaller with the box glider. So we're going to shrink it down, shrink it down. From memory, I think that was 0 0.7 when I did this earlier. Just double check. Yep. Down. And that's about right. And then what we're going to do with the object, which is why I got the gizmo out, is that we're going to rotate it to kind of sit where the handle does. Because the problem is if we put this box glider on the actual whole axe, it's going to sit in all over the axe and we're not going to be able to grab it at the right point. And we just want to grab it in our hand at this particular point here. Is it going to be perfect? No, but for this demonstration, it's going to be pretty damn close. We still probably need to adjust it once we get it going. I think on that Z, on that Y, it needs to be a little bit thicker too. Probably 0.1. Good. The Z probably being 0.1 as well. Because the other thing is, or 0.12. Because the other thing is, we want this area to be half decent size because if it's too small, it's going to make it also very hard for us to use the distance grabber aiming on it. Okay, and then the other part, we, as we saw in the documentation, was the uh, distance grabbable. So that's letting it know. Now, you can sometimes get away without using this part here, the grab points. But what I find is that this makes things a little bit easier, especially if we start having a more complicated um, game object. So it doesn't hurt it. I find it easier. So I just drag that straight into... Oh, sorry. We need to change this to one. 
and then drag this in. I find it's best practice just because if you start adding to it, things don't get confused. Um, everything else we can keep in there as is. Um, if you look at the documentation, it explains what all these things are here. So now that we've got the item set up, we now just need to set up our player. Now the first thing we're going to do is our custom hand left and right from last week. We're just going to disable them. Not get rid of them for the moment um, because we may use this in future videos for something else, but we're just going to disable them so that they don't interact with the environment for the moment. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to add our distance grabber hands. So if we look in here, distance you go, distance grab hand left and distance grab hand right. Now these actually come under the controller anchor, not under the hand anchor. So we've got one there. And one there. And these things need a, a few things set up and I don't know why, but the left hand see, doesn't actually have the distance grabber script in it. So make sure that you do have the distance grabber script attached. You can change its usage later on if you don't want to be able to grab with the left hand, but uh, Unity will throw an error. Um, one of the scripts there references it, so it does need to be in there. So a few things that do need to be set up with each one of these hands. The parent transform refers to the hand anchor. So this one needs a left hand anchor. And this is the actual OVR player controller, which goes into our player. Our sphere cast radius just does need to be increased by a little bit. And the only other part that we need to add in is the grip transform here. And all you need to do is expand this one and bring down the grip transform here. Now, another good practice here is that here we should actually be setting up a object layer for our grabbable objects. And so that's what we're gonna do for this one here. So we just go to our layers, add a layer, use the first empty one, and we're gonna say grabbable. So go back to our hand, objects in layer eight, remembering that then we need to come down to our ax handler, change this to the grabbable layer or it won't work and then repeating everything for our right hand. So same thing, it's already got the grip trans in there for us. Like I said, it's really weird. It sets up some, but not the other. Um, bring down our right hand anchor for the parent. Player there, layer eight. So this one's already got a sphere cast radius set up. Oh, sorry, and you do need to click Back to our left hand. Great, almost there. So before I forget, the next step, the other one we need to do is actually bring the ax that we brought in and ch uh, child it to the ax handler object so that it will move when we do that. So the final part we need to add in is a new game object. So if we just go to our player controller, create an empty, and this one we're gonna call grab manager. Oh, actually, what do they call it in the documentation? Like I said, it doesn't really matter, but just for consistency. Detect grab range. Just so you guys know what we're talking about. And in that one there, it said we needed a grab manager. And a sphere collider. Now sphere collider, we're gonna give it a bigger range. I'm gonna give it a range of about three, in fact. 
Now these colors up here, just ignore for the moment. If you checked out the sample scene uh, provided by Oculus, you would have seen that they do have an outline for the objects that are detectable, uh, sorry, that are grabbable in range and that have been targeted. Uh, that one is used a custom shader, which you won't be able to use in the universal render pipeline and you'd need to come up with more of a custom one for that. So we are going to ignore that part of it for the moment. We are going to show other ways that you can still implement things and there is something that we can take from that uh, sample scene to make things a little bit easier for our users. But all in all, that is everything that we need at this time. So let's jump in and see if it works. Okay, so jumping right in. Okay, we've seen some interesting interaction going on there. Um, I've noticed that our hands aren't animating. But let's have a look at here. Okay, we can grab it. Uh, we do have to get very, very close and be very accurate at the moment. So, okay, a few things that we need to fix up. Okay, so one thing at a time, our actual hands, we have forgotten to add the animator. So all we do is click on the button. That one's our left hand. And same for our right hand. Okay, there we go, we've got the hands working. But we're still kicking that like a football. Um, the second one is most likely, oh, I know what it'll be. It's because of our detect grab range. This sphere collider needs to be a trigger. Let's see if that fixes that. Great. So two out of three bugs done. The last one was our axe in that it was grabbing upside down. And again, this is why we're doing this as separate parts. Now, just to make things easier, I'm just gonna pull this out here, click on an axe, and we're just gonna rotate it 180 degrees and if you don't know when you go to rotate hold down the control button and you'll allow you to snap So we can do 180 degrees And then of course we actually need to once again child the axe to the axe handler So that should be all three of our issues solved Yeah, we're pretty close. Um, we can do some small adjustments to make this look a little bit better, but for the most part, we've got it pretty close. So as you would have probably seen, it's a little bit hard to tell when you can and cannot grab. So it is helpful to have an assistant. What we can do, while we can't use the shaders as they are from the example scene, we can use the arrows that they do provide. So the simpler way, simplest way to do that is if we go back into here. Okay, it's Oculus. That's right, Oculus, sample framework, usage, distance grabber. I think it's prefabs. And outliners, and we want the Grab cube with crosshair. Let's just shrink this down for a second. Double click on it. Great. So as you can see, it's come up with the purple shader of death. What we want out of this is the crosshairs. And of course, what we need to do is right click and unpack the prefab. 
bring the crosshairs out, delete the object where our axe handler is. We want to copy with our crosshairs, paste component values. So if we now go to here, Again, try it again, paste co component values. Great, now we should be over the top of it. Sorry, you need to actually pull it apart and then do it. So copy component again, crosshairs. Bring it over here. Looks right about the right size. and then just assemble it again. So you have your axe handler, bring in your axe, and then bring in your crosshairs. We do need to zero it off. I know it seems weird that it's sitting off right. And if we come around this side, you can see it. So when we push play now, Okay, so with that, we should have a nice big window now to be able to aim at. So we're gonna walk across, there we can see it. Aims right on and grab it. Perfect. Drop it down, give the big thumbs up. And that's all for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Next week, join us uh, when I'll be looking at some of the other locomotion options that we do have. So teleporting and the such to give us a few more options to get around. So I hope you did take the challenge and hopefully you got most of it done, if not all of it done. Um, if you didn't and you did find some things challenging and even after watching this video, if you're still not quite sure on a few parts of this, please do comment below, ask any questions. I'm more than happy to answer. And as always, if there are any videos that you would like to see me do or if there's any other follow-up VR video tutorials that you'd like to see me do, please also comment below with those. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share to help grow our beautiful Unity community. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button below to make sure you get to see our next video. See you shortly.